Hey guys, how's it going? Previously on the channel, we were working on this Cub Cadet 482, International Cub Cadet 482. No idea what year it is. Guessing it is 1980s to 1990s, uh, maybe 1970s, but I doubt that. It's not really that style. Previously on the channel, we pulled the engine out of a riding lawnmower, a scrapper riding lawnmower. Um, we took it out. It was a 12 horse supposed to win. Pulled it out. We looked it over, we got it running, and we were going to throw it into this tractor, so we pulled the engine that was in this tractor out, and it is currently sitting in the other room on a bench. And after we pulled it out, we started looking the two engines over and making sure that things would line up. At the end of the video, I talked about, I made a discovery, and you guys would have to wait until this video to see it. So... Let's go on ahead and I'm gonna show you guys my discovery. So here is the discovery I have made. I'm sure both all of you know that these engines, the flywheels are not exactly the same height as each other. So I did some digging and I started looking into the two of them. Yes, I flattened that one out before I had that engine hanging off the side of the bench. You can actually see the scratch marks where I ran it along the table and hung the oil drain off the side of the table. This engine, this right here to the bottom of the table, I actually wrote it down, was 11, four inches from here to here, four inches. Yeah. This engine over here from this bottom hole to the table, I actually did have it straight up and down like that, but it ended up rotating on me because, well, I was moving it around earlier, so that's why. Five and a half inches. I measured these brackets that the engine sits on, the old engine sat on, because I was curious. Inch, these are an inch tall. So, I did some digging. Here to find out, that engine sat up five inches. This one over here. This over here sits up five and a half inches. This, uh, where the drive shaft bolts to the front of the engine. So after sitting down and doing some thinking about it, we don't even need to worry about these brackets right here, which is good. So that I'm not worried about. These are just going to go on the shelf. I'm not even going to consider trying to reuse them. So there you go. What we are going to do is on this plate right here, this is the one that held those mounting plates that held the engine up, the little legs. Um, I am going to bolt the engine directly to those plates. I found out there are a couple holes in both of them that the engine will mount to. Those are seven and a half inches from each other when they're mounted into the tractor. On the bottom of the twin engine block, the bolt holes are seven and a half inches apart from each other, which lined up perfectly. So we are going to mount these plates to the bottom of this engine. Then we are going to swing it in here and we are going to drop it into the tractor. One problem that I have run into is the drive shaft. I'm not sure where the drive shaft is going to end up lining up at and or if it's going to be too long for the swap. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if we're going to end up wanting to put the PTO on it or even use a mower deck on this tractor. I slimmed a none chance, but you never know. If I have to, I'm going to shave this drive shaft down a smidge and get it to work. I also just noticed that that gearbox is the same as the John Deere's have for their steering, which is kind of cool. So yeah. That is the current plan. If I have to, I will shave down that drive shaft. I really, really would like to not, but you know, if I have to, I will. So that is where we're at for now. Um, hopefully we can get all this done in one video. I didn't really like splitting the video up like I did, but people don't watch, you know, two hour long videos. I know I lose attention within 20 minutes of a video, so I thought, well, well, I know people won't watch all the way through, so we'll just go on ahead and stop it here and we'll restart it. And plus, you know, this gives me a little bit more content to upload. So there you go. All right, let's go on ahead and get into this now that I have told you my discovery. I also discovered 
The rear bolt holes in this engine are tapped. The front ones aren't. Actually, the front ones are, the rear ones aren't. So I'm going to tap them, or I'm going to see if I can tap them and get that to work. So that way we can just run bolts right through the bottom of the engine and be done with it. So yeah, here we go. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop that engine back in here or that opposed twin in here, and we're gonna see if it'll mount. I actually put this back in here just now. It's not bolted, it is bolted in, but it's not tight, so. Got my surgical cart. <laughs> More or less just a rubber-made cart. Let's see if we can drop this guy in here. See how hard he is. Keep in mind, we can't access the front because, well, that's uh, not accessible at the moment. Hmm. Let's see, why does it seem like this one's heavier than that one? I would think that one would be since it's older. Maybe not. Okay, we got problems already. Do not pick it up by the air filter. That's not smart. <laughs> we got problems already. That's gonna run into that. This is, eh, that might work, maybe. Hmm, all right, I already like what I see. <coughs> so in order for this to work, we gotta take these mufflers off and figure something else out for them. Maybe go without them. <laughs> um, let's see here. What do we want to do? Maybe go without them, rig up some sort of different idea. I wonder if those are threaded inside of there and if we could do something with that. I don't have another muffler that we could rig on here. If we can get this drive shaft out of the way for now, that would be wonderful. Because it doesn't seem like it wants to. Ready? Let's kick it forward. <laughs> okay. And again, do not pick up the engine by the air filter. Okay, it'll fit, possibly, maybe not. We are going to have to take <coughs> these mufflers off, which I was kind of afraid of. Yeah, that, that's too long. It'll line up to that hole right there, which I don't think is the one that I was after to begin with. So we're gonna take these off. I mean, that might work, probably not. We'll just have to see how far back we need to shave the dry shaft, I guess. Unless somebody out there knows where I can find a... Actually, those would probably be... No, because that's a... That's a gear drive, that won't work. That's a completely different setup. Never mind. <laughs> um, can we take, if we take that off, just bear with me, I'm experimenting right now and just kind of thinking about stuff as I go. Like I said before, I don't think we're planning on using the PTO for anything. We're going to have to take these off regardless because they're not going to work. <coughs> we're going to have to find something else to mount to this engine. Or just run it open headers, which I don't want to do. Unless we can chop it off. Put something else. 
top of here. What would you put on that is the question. Something that probably goes over top of that, shoots out the front. But I would want to be able to keep these around and use them if they needed to be used. Um, let's see here. What would I do? Cutting them sounds like a good option, but at the same time, you know, not really. But that's our choke linkage. That was another thing I was concerned about, but that looks the same as the one that came off of the other engine. That'll reach it for sure. What's this? I think that was just kind of floating there. It didn't do anything. Yeah, that'll, oh yeah, that'll work for sure. Okay, that's, that's a plus. Um, okay. So the drive shaft is going to have to be shaved. You're gonna to have to find a probably remove the drive shaft. In order to do that, which is that's okay. Because right now it's gonna end up in the center of the flywheel. Way past where it bolts, so that's that's a problem. Because right now it's on top of the flywheel, which it shouldn't be. And no matter what I do, it's going to stay there. Our heights are good, though. I do know that. Because when I checked it, that's five. That's only going to be a half inch. I mean, this is going to be bent, you know, but... They're designed to have a little bit of a bend to them. So, I mean, that sh should be fine. Because this is, that's rubber right there. You know, so we can take advantage of that. But not, not too much advantage. Since we have the engine dropped in there, we should go on ahead and throw the side panels back on it. And just see. What's this? This is the starter, which is, oh no, <laughs> that's not good. The starter's on that side. The starter wire is over here. Luckily, we can just flip that quick, so we might be okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> I think, I think I know what needs to be done. Gone, gone, that should make it set flat. The PTO might rub into this, but I don't think it will. No, it won't. Um, either we kick the engine back, or we chop off the drive shaft and kick the engine forward. We're gonna have to because we're not lining up with the holes that I wanted to. Well, actually, Maybe when we pull the engine back out, we can look into that a little bit further. I doubt these are going to come out. I'm not looking to break any bolts. So, I mean, that's... We may just end up cutting it off right here. Cutting it off right there. Just try to find, you know, where it's straight. And once we do that... Once we do that, make sure it's straight, find something to put on there to go, oh, or we could bend. You know, if we could bend, if we could bend these pipes up, there's a mount down there on the bottom. If we could bend this without damaging that or this, we could potentially get this to work. I mean, it doesn't, 
it needs to go down an inch in order for it to set on that plate. And then it needs to come up a little bit more in order for it to shoot. I'm gonna have it shoot at the front grill. That's how the old one was and that's how this is gonna be. So with that being said, autism so it's harder for me to plan stuff so I apologize for it taking so long but I think I know where I'm at right now let's unbolt those on bottom and maybe we can bend these and get them to shoot out that front grill as long as they don't run into the grill I think we'll be okay Maybe we'll end up mounting the mule drive back under there and seeing if that'll work. I'm tempted to go on ahead and mount the side panels on just to make sure that they'll mount with that engine in there. I don't see a problem with having them mounted in there with that engine in there, but you know, that could be, um, that could be, I don't know. It might work. All right, well, let me get this engine back out of here and let me get things kind of dialed up and figured out. And I'll bring you back here once I do. Pulled that engine out. I bent those exhausts up a little bit. Let's just go on ahead and drop it in now. And let's see how it does and what other things that we need to do. One thing I missed, and it's driving on my cart, is the kill wire for the engine. I think I have figured out where it is. So hopefully, we should be able to put this motor in now. We're not going to be able to start it yet. However, yeah, see that lines up. But the muffler is sticking out the grill and the PTO's up real far, so that's not gonna work. I'd like the mufflers to be in still and be able to put the grill in, which actually I don't think we're gonna be able to if we mount it where it looks looks like it's going to mount. Unless we can bend those. This one runs into the side here. I have to kick it over that way. Hmm. One thought that I had is upstairs. I don't know if it would fit over those pipes. I have a muffler off of a twin that the pipes might go into, but I don't know if they would be big enough. We could possibly use that muffler on this or maybe rig something up to get that to work or find another engine that has a twin and take the muffler off of it and put it on here. I'm not sure. <clears throat> we might have to figure something. If we can, we could cut the tips off of those I would like the noise to be muffled. I really don't want it to be loud, you know. There's a point in time for things to be loud and a point in time for things to be quiet. I'd rather have it quiet. Um, I think if we just go ahead and that's not gonna do what I want. Well, now it almost, are we? No, we're not setting on that. We could get a bolt in right there. We can't get one up in the front though. I'd have to take the mounting plates out. And it appears it's gonna be a pain 
the rear rubber will be easy. The front one's going to be hard to get to. The engine's back a little bit further than I really would like it to be, but that's probably going to have to be how it is. I really don't want to take those mufflers off, but we might just, <sighs> we might just have to. Unless we can cut this here and here, and then later on rig something up to get it to work. That could be what we end up doing. Hmm. So. I'm not sure. This is definitely proving to be a project. <laughs> I was thinking that it was a little bit easier than that, but I guess maybe not. I think for now, um, we'll just, Now, if those pipes shot out the front instead of the bottom of that, I wonder if we could twist. It'd be nice if we could twist these over. I don't think we'd be able to do that, though, because then they'd run into this. No, we can't. Or bring these up chop that bottom off, just have them shoot out like that. And if we had to angle them a little bit. Hmm. Definitely some possibilities here, but I don't think that we're gonna be able to keep these ones for sure. Depending, no matter what idea we do. I don't want to do any cutting on the tractor if I can avoid it. So I just, any cutting I do, I want it to be on that engine or those mufflers or maybe even those mounting plates if I have to. So that's kind of where we're at for now. Um, I did rig up a kill wire, by the way, that red wire circling around the air filters it. Shit. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I'm glad it's that though, and not the engine being too big. You know, it's not sitting on the cylinders. We'd be in trouble if it was. I have a friend of mine that's good with these cubs. I don't know if he'd be able to help me out or not. Although, I don't think they ever mentioned, mounted this engine into these tractors from the factory. If they did, I could find out and maybe look at one and see what muffler setup it's got and also drive shaft, but. Hmm. Well, let me bring you back. Maybe I'll figure something out off camera. So I did some thinking last night. It's currently the next day. I ended up sleeping on this project last night and I sat down and I thought about it a little bit more. Uh, I had some ideas come to me last night while I was laying there in bed, wondering what is life. <laughs> and uh, I had some ideas. So what we could do is right there where the track, where the engine is sitting is right where it needs to be. I did some measuring and from the back of the, or from the PTO on the old engine, which I have another 482 that I went up and measured and it was three inches from the front right there to, or three and a half inches from right there to the PTO. That's what it is on here. Therefore it is sitting right where it needs to set, which kind of throws things off a little bit because now I'm not sure if the side panels are gonna fit in there, but oh well. So what we need to do now, or what I figured up, is right there is where it needs to set. I need to drill another set of holes 
which is just not what I wanted to do, but oh well, I guess you gotta do it. And then also I want to jump over here and I wanna pull that drive shaft out. And after I pull that drive shaft out, I wanna get it in there and do some measuring and see how far away that flywheel is from wherever it mounts back there. And once I do that, measure that, measure that drive shaft, cut off what I don't need off the drive shaft, drill a hole in it for this uh, little guy right here to mount. And then after I do that, we should be good to go and ready to mount the engine and get the engine running. Well, it already runs. We just got to get it running for the tractor and maybe driving around possibly today. Another thought that I had was take the mufflers. If you've seen the Starship Enterprise, you know what I'm talking about. Take the mufflers and bend them up like how they are in the Starship Enterprise, where they're, these are straight, going straight forward and right out the grill. So I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. However, they actually don't look too bad the way they are. So I might just leave them like that. However, the engine's not sitting flat, so there you go. So yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do next. Let's go ahead and pop this shifter cover off. I already took the bolts out of it. it should just slide. Maybe. There we go. So right there's our gearbox that goes to this little guy right here. That little guy goes back to the transmission. So right here is our... Um, Thing we want to unbolt this from so that we can run our measurement. I really don't want to ruin that rubber piece and I see that I've bent. So I just don't want to get that out of there now. the other day. I'm not sure how many of you heard of Danger Cats. Another YouTube channel that I like to sit down and watch. He was talking about him and I jumped over and I checked him out. I thought his videos were pretty damn funny. He does a podcast now I guess but his older there we go. His older videos that he uploaded I thought were pretty damn funny. So Go check him out if you get a chance. Let's go on ahead and let's do our measurements. That looks fine. Uh, we're just not gonna talk about that. Let me grab a measuring tape. And let's just see how far we need to come to get about where we wanna be. Do that. I don't want to do that. I just want to. I'm going to go with 16 and a half. So we need this to be 16 and a half inches. Everything's turning out to be half. We got three and a half, which is about half of them. Don't get 16. When I measured mine, when I measured mine from the little rubber plate or uh, when I measured this I measured it from that little rubber plate so we're just gonna take it drop it in here and we're gonna take this off actually and once we get this off of here we're gonna get some measurements there we go you're supposed to have a little bit that what the hell is this pokes out I don't know if that was supposed to be there or not. There's not one in that other one. It's probably supposed to be there. I had a little bit that poked out on that other one. I put it right there. So that's where we're going to do it. 
we want it to be 16 and a half, which is right there. Let me grab me a measuring or a marker. Find a my white marker. I don't know where it is. I would think it would be up here somewhere because usually when I'm writing stuff down, or usually when I'm measuring stuff, I do it right up here. But of course it's not. So that's just what you want. So hopefully, that works. It's probably right there underneath that tin. I might leave a half inch, or I might leave an inch on there because I'm seeing that they're leaving a little bit less than an inch in front of the drive shaft. I don't know why, but I guess it's probably to keep that shaft from rocking around in there, which isn't a bad idea, but you know, some people like us that don't want to pull the engine back out or move it in order to get that drive shaft in. We don't appreciate that. <laughs> Grab me the grinder. I might need another cutting disc in order to make it through. Uh, maybe we might get lucky, we'll see. I might regret doing this, or I might do the right thing. Ready? Ooh, we're missing a piece. The damn bastard moved on me. Get it good and tight in there. We're missing a chunk. We should be able to cut with that. fairly well for missing a piece. What happened to that? Come on. Let it go. There we go. So now we take that, we just spin it like so. And then we cut into it and wonder if we're doing a good job or not. One thing I actually want to do Flatten that out a little bit. That way it goes on there nice. But yeah, we're missing a little bit out of that disc and that disc did fairly well. Cutting that, let me clean that edge up a little bit. I'm just gonna take it and run it around the grinder a little bit and then wire wheel it some just to smooth it and then I'll bring you back. Took it up there and I cleaned up the edge of it. I'd say that looks fairly good. It's nice and smooth, as you can see. So now, we just stick this back in our little vise. We throw our, we throw our end on it. I think we want our end to be like that, or like that, damn it, there goes that thing. I want it flush with I want it flush with the edge of, or with the end of that drive shaft. I think, we're not quite flush. Are we flush now? No. He shouldn't be doing that, oh. God damn it. I just cracked that damn head. Oh well. Just carefully. Damn it. Well, that ain't no more. Maybe we can find another one. Shit. How the hell did we do that? I must have got caught on something in here. 
skim it. Well, there's the end of that. Wasn't hitting it very hard. Um, let's see, where do we go? We could probably get it in there, bolt it down real tight. Maybe we would be fine. That looks like it needs to be cleaned out. That's probably the exact reason why that broke. If we bolt it in there fairly tight, that would hold it together. As long as it, oh, these are flat. Oh, there we go. As long as we don't crack it any further, we should be fine. And that'll slide on there easily now, like so. So there we go. Actually, we might be okay. I want that flush. I measured it right at 16, actually. So this needs to be right there. That's right where we want it. Cool. So now we take this, we line them two up, we grab our marker. We're gonna be able to get in there. Probably not. We grab our thinner marker. And we just put a dot right there. Perfect. Now we're gonna run our drill bit through that. And once we run our drill bit through, we can I see it right there. Grab my salt punch. I can't find my punch and I really don't want the drill bit wandering. So I'm gonna do something I don't like to do and hopefully that'll help it keep that drill bit from wandering away. I ended up finding a couple small ones after looking around. Hopefully, oh, it just, that just barely fits. <laughs> cool. Let's jump in here. I can't afford that bit to break. I don't want it to break the side of there. So we're just gonna jump up to the next size. Now, since we got a pretty damn near decent hole going, so. Ready? That battery just died. Grab another. There we go. We probably want that hole to be a little bit bigger. So, let's just roll with it. We're gonna try this bit. Damn it, what the hell is that? There we go. Let's just see how this one does. Ready? Is it fucking dead already? That's interesting. I think it's time for some new drill batteries. These are about, I want to say about 10 years old, maybe even 11, and their batteries are all starting to go bad, I guess. So, yeah, it's time for new ones. So 
There we go. I did it. Oh yeah, look at that. That goes in there nice and tight. So now we just stick our hub on, like so. Careful hitting on it. And uh, get that lined up. Drop that down. It sticks out the bottom, which is what you want. Cool. So we'll just take that. And we'll flip her around. I actually want to put a couple of washers on that. Well, I decided to quit being a snowflake and pull the mufflers off, even though I knew or I thought for a fact that I was gonna break an exhaust stud or bolt. Well, luckily I didn't. And I've also found out that inside of the exhaust holes there are threads. So we may get lucky here. Let's pop this guy in and let's see where he needs to be. I said I want it three inches from the back. I also ended up finding the other thing for up here that the drive shaft bolts onto. Right, there's where we want it. And I think the engine is setting, uh, not quite center, but I mean, it'll work for what we're doing. This is just a backyard rebuild, <laughs> backyard engine swap. Um, Right there, that's the only problem that I see. It almost needs, I think it needs to swing this way in the rear end. No, because that side's hanging off too, actually. What about this side? No, that side looks fine, this side's hanging off. It's actually not hanging off. It's on, but you know, if it goes any further, it's gonna come right off of that bracket. But we're right there. That I would say is right where the motor wants to be. So I need to grab a marker. <laughs> All right, so here's what I have done. As you guys can see, the mufflers are gone from the engine. Actually, I think I already talked about that. So, got the engine dropped in. As you can see, there is a nut in that hole right there where it bolts to the frame. I have successfully managed to get the engine bolted to the cradle sitting in the frame. I have not bolted the cradle into the frame of the tractor yet. However, I'm looking at it and it looks like all my bolt holes are lining up, which is good. So, I took the engine out. And I marked it, as you guys saw earlier, on the frame. And I marked where the hole needs to be, cut it, or I drilled it, and I got the engine bolted. Luckily, the hole in the front lined up. There was another hole on the, in the cradle that lined up with the hole that was on the motor, which ended up perfect for me. So I just went ahead and bolted it into that hole because there's no point in drilling another hole just to say, well, damn, I messed up. So... There you go, got that in. Everything as far as I know is all set and ready to go. Like I said, I have not bolted the engine into the tractor yet. I do not know if the firewall is going to fit or not. I do not know if the fuel tank is going to fit or not, but hell, we're gonna figure out one way or another. So let me put you guys in the stand and let's get this thing in. Just to go ahead and put a lid on it and see if we fucked ourselves. Let's go on ahead and drop the fuel tank in as well as the firewall. Let's see just how we end up. That should go. Oh, I can already tell you. <laughs> it's it's gonna be close. We may not be able to use the firewall. We may just have to take the firewall off and mount the fuel tank. Which we should be able to do that, so we should be okay. 
I don't really think it needs that firewall anyway. Um, let's go ahead and let's get this engine in. Let's just keep things sorted and moved around. There we go. We got to find our mounting hole. Come on. bring you guys back after I do all the wiring because it's just simple plug and play and I don't I'm sure you guys don't want to watch that you wanted to see me struggle with getting the engine to mount so we'll bring you back later well bringing you guys back I got the engine mounted in I'd say it looks pretty damn factory of that tractor it's not meant for it but damn it looks like it it looks fairly good the engine's just about even in both sides and it's right in the center of the tractor so I would say we are good to go. All the wires are hooked up, the gas tank is in, and I know the question going through all you guys' heads. Are them side panels gonna fit on there? I don't know, I haven't tested it. I was waiting for you guys to come back. So we're gonna find out. One thing I did differently, no more firewall. I put a spring right there on that mount, so that way the gas tank still has some tension on it. And I put a couple of bolts on there to hold the, or I put a couple of nuts on there to hold the damn uh, gas tank in. So it won't, well, it's in. Um, <laughs> this is fine. I'm just gonna ignore everything that I see here. Uh, no throttle cable at the moment. The throttle cable is too short, unfortunately, to rig it. If the fuel tank wasn't there, it would work. But going around the fuel tank is just too much work. Anyway. Other than that, I can't really think of anything else to point out and say, well, this is wrong because it really isn't much. Yeah, <laughs> it's meant to be. We got open headers. Right now, that's just about the only thing. There's no exhaust on it at all. It's just coming straight out of the head. And damn, I'm gonna be honest with you, that thing fit on there perfect. I mean, it does not look like that engine came out of a scrapper, lot of riding mower, and was thrown into a Cub Cadet garden tractor. You would think that engine was meant to be. That looks good. So, if you're thinking about doing the swap, a bring some scrap and a first twin engine into your Cub Cadet 482. Well, guess what? It's been done on the Maniac More YouTube channel. It works, proven by the Maniac More. So you guys get to see <laughs> the finished product. Just getting the side panels back on it, apparently. Because I want to see how this thing looks, and I'm sure you guys do as well. What the hell? Why won't you? Let me see. Okay. Now we got it figured out. 
But yeah, like I said, that's all we're missing right now is the exhaust. And once we get something rigged up for that, we'll be flawless. And this thing will be perfect. So yeah. So now it is the time of the video. The only problem, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that I have run into with this swap, the starter, that's not good. It runs right into the frame, or the stud doesn't run into the frame, but it's so close to the frame, if you try to take that nut off of it, you're never gonna get it back on without unbolting that engine and picking it up with a jack. So, just a heads up on God damn it. I forgot that even was there. So just a heads up on that one for you guys. That's something you're gonna have to run into and figure out. But it ain't too hard once you look at it. Let's get this guy back in here. I gotta remember where these were and how they were. No. no. Damn it. That's the only thing I don't like about these having springs. And they're different. Actually. Huh. Who'd have thought? I think I have the wrong spring on this side. Maybe not. Because, oh, there, yeah, I do have the wrong spring. I was going to say. So, I think these just go all the way up the grill. Yeah, they do. And then after that, you just run it right into the thing here. Like so. I do like the way they did the grill, though but it is sometimes a pain. But other than the guy that's autistic to begin with and has trouble with just about everything, like me. <laughs> After that, you get, you get into it and figure it out. Got the last wing nut here. stuff the hard way, which is the correct way to learn. So there we go. That is in. That ain't quite as tight as I want it. Oh no. Did I get... That's not supposed to slide into that, is it? I think it is. No. Maybe. I don't think it is, but it might actually be. I may have put this on here wrong, which would explain why they're flopping like they are. I think when I put it on, Side panels will work though, it just might take some finagling. Gotta jump over there and do a quick. Now it'll hold itself. Because it definitely seemed like it was kind of off.
Now I know what somebody's gonna say, you shouldn't put the side panels on until you start it to make sure that nothing's touching anywhere and you're not gonna get sparked, but that ain't no fun. So we're just gonna do it this way. There's a throttle cable. Yes. We'll probably just let the throttle cable be. I guess it's fine. As long as it doesn't touch anything. There we go. <laughs> there you go, as long as it doesn't act like driving. So sort of thing. There we go. There we go. I already see it working. Cool. It actually looks like with this engine, we've got a lot more room. I think this engine's a little bit smaller than that one, but that's a 12 horse. Hmm, interesting. I would think the twin would be bigger, but apparently not. Let me go grab a battery for it and we'll get the battery dropped in. And after we do that, we'll get into it and see what it does. Grab the battery and I also grab some gas. Just go on ahead and get this battery put in here. And I gotta remember, I think this is positive. I think that one is negative. Because that one has the, oh, this is negative. Yeah, I was right, okay. Because that one just goes right to the tractor. You wanna use equally rusty bolts. Because, you know, that's just the way it is. We'll run over here. So our first battery <coughs> is, or our first cable is now in. Meaning that we should go ahead and hook up our, or actually we got to do the, got to grab the branches and get this cable tight. Where's the other one? I have another seven. Here it is. Sitting over here on my cart. I don't smell anything burning. I don't hear any sizzling. Again, I didn't get any sparks, so we're we're good there for now. Just gotta get this battery in. See if this thing will crank. And if it'll crank, we'll throw some gas in it. See what it does. Ready? Oh, that's good. That might be the battery being. This thing's got a bad key switch. Yep, it does. I knew something was wrong about it. Let me grab a key out of something else. Let's give it one good go.
Hmm. Can't get down to the starter to hit it. No gas in it, like I said. I want to put some down the intake though and just see if it'll go because I don't know if it has spark right now or not. Well, what I mean is I know it has spark, but I don't know if it's killed right now or not. If it doesn't start, we know something in the wiring might not be right. Maybe the kill wire is hooked up wrong. Maybe. That other engine that this tractor had was also one that if you, uh, it was a uh, magneto as well. So it should be the same. So here's a little bit of an update. I ended up getting that carb off of the engine. I also, I had to pull the gas tank out in order to get a good, in order to get a wrench on that one bolt that wouldn't come out. But I managed to get it out. Uh, just didn't want to take that gas tank out, but really, really didn't have a choice. Jumping over here. Here is the carb. I did clean it up some when I pulled it out. It didn't look all too bad, other than the stuff that was sitting in the bowl. It looked pretty well all right. There was some ethanol buildup in the pump, but I mean, that was really just about it. It wasn't too bad. So there you go. Waiting on a rebuild kit for it, and then we're going to get it put back together. Well, guys, I wasn't expecting this, but I think I'm going to go on ahead and have to end the video here. I wasn't going to end it this early. I was going to wait until the tractor was running and we had it driving around. But right now at the moment, I just don't have the parts for it. It's not really my tractor, so I can't, you know, just say, oh, I'm going to order this and order that. I'm kind of waiting right now. It's my brother's tractor. I told him two weeks ago to get the parts ordered for it. And well, I had to hound on him again about it today and I don't have time to wait. So... I'm just going to go on ahead and end the video here. Uh, I think for right now, we're pretty much, we're at a point with this one where I can probably just go ahead and stop the video. Unfortunately, my phone batter, my phone filled up, the storage filled up on my phone when we were filming getting the tractor running or and diagnosing the carburetor being the problem, causing it not to run. So unfortunately, I didn't catch that on camera. However, the carb ended up being plugged up. I did take it apart. Not really eventful. It cleaned up okay. Just the pump diaphragm was hard. And there was also a few other things I looked at in there that didn't look all that pretty. I'm currently waiting on a rebuild kit. I had the thought today of this 11 horse Briggs over here has the same carb design on it with the fuel pump. I had the thought of taking this engine or this uh, carb over here apart and pulling the diaphragm out of it and sticking in that other carb to see if I could get it to work. But I think this carb is smaller than, or the I think that fuel pump diaphragm was smaller than the one off of this engine. We can test that theory though and find out. That's got a hole right there. Is that supposed to be there? Interesting. Wow, they look the same. I wonder if it would work. Why are there holes? Okay, that has the holes in it too. So I guess that must be normal. Must be for, must be some sort of release. Hmm. Don't know. So I'm currently waiting on a rebuild kit for that carb. Plus I don't, I might have the float. I wonder if I have a football gasket for it. No, I don't. No. What's this? Oh, no right. <laughs> I don't want that getting ruined. No. There's an empty drawer. So, nope, I don't have any. I thought I did, because I remember ordering a kit for my home light, and it, I think it came with all the possible types of gaskets you could get, but I guess not. 
So, speaking of the home light, this is going to be a project here soon. We're going to be bringing it back to the channel. I don't know when. I have been messing with it, though, off camera. I really should be filming it, but just haven't really had the motivation to film it. Also, I had a couple questions about this. Somebody was asking me about it. Yes, it is a project for the channel. I'm currently waiting on a gas tank for it. So, if you're watching this, Curtis, you know who you are. <laughs> you told me you had to get a gas tank for it. Well, still waiting. Yeah, I'm not really in a rush, honestly. I really haven't had the ambition to mess with this neither. Got some other tires for it, possibly. I don't know if they're going to fit on here or not. Uh, different rear tires, and I might swap the front tires around too. So, not sure what I want to do with it quite yet. I'm probably just going to get it running and sell it. That's probably going to be the path for this guy, unfortunately. I don't really have... It was kind of thrown in. I wasn't really expecting it. However, if I can find a deck for it, maybe I'll mow around here with it. But, again, I don't know. And also, speaking of upcoming projects, several people have flooded my Facebook Messenger, my Instagram private messenger, as well as a couple people have tagged me or commented on pictures I've posted of this cub on some of the cub groups I'm in, asking me when am I going to have this tractor on the channel again. Here soon, I am currently filming a video on it. We are going to be getting into it and seeing if we can solve the ignition and to figure out why the ignition, for whatever reason, never wants to work right. So I won't bore you guys with any of the details. You guys can figure it out when I upload the video. I've also made a pretty interesting discovery about this engine. I don't think it's the original engine, but we'll find out. So yeah, there you go. I guess you get some channel updates. <laughs> so yeah, I want to thank all you guys for watching. And I will catch all of you in the next video yeah the next video so yeah i keep thinking uh this video it's either this video or the video before this one on this cub that's going up on new year's day i think it's the one before yeah because that's the first video oh yeah this video is going to be going up on uh this is going to be the second video of 2022 2023 depending if i wait to upload it another week I see white paint. That's interesting. So yeah, I don't see any yellow back here though. I wonder. No, it looks red. I don't see any evidence of any painting. So that'd be a tall tale sign. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, all right guys. I wanna thank all you for watching. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys enjoy this uh, video series. Hopefully here soon, the next video that you guys see on this tractor is going to be putting that carb back in there and getting it running again because I'm ready to have this thing out of my building. <laughs> so yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch all of you in the next video. Take care. Bye.